Hi everyone, today I wanna to do a rundown of Haskell's deriving feature. Um, so this is actually a feature that has been in Haskell from the very beginning, and it's grown some uh, some in more interesting aspects recently, and so I just thought we would we would go through the uh, the couple of different ways that you can use deriving in, in your programs. Um, so the original Haskell 98 idea for deriving was to have definitions like this. So I can write data t equal, whoops, equals muck t int bool. And now if I have some function f, which takes a t, and, and suppose I want to return a string, the string representation of the t, I want to be able to say f of t equals show t and have that work. Of course, this isn't going to work right off the bat because there's no instance for show t, right? Show is this type class that allows us to render um, uh, uh, members of the type class into strings. Um, so we could write the show instance, but it would be quite boring. It would mean we'd have to print out the letters mkt and then call the show, uh, call show on the int and call show on the bool. And if there's a whole lot of constructors and a whole lot of fields, this becomes boring very, very quickly. And so the idea is that we should be able to write deriving show, which creates that instance for us. So this produces this instance show t, where show equals, and then there's this big definition that GHC generates for us. Um, and this was actually from the very beginning of Haskell, we had this feature. Um, and we can, we can derive more than one thing at a time. Instead of just show, we can have show and eek. Right, so now I can compare two different t's for equality. So we can see this if I type, uh, let's see, muck t three true. Does that equal muck t three true? Why, yes, it does. We can evaluate that, and then we see that the answer is true. And if I change this to four, then, well, no, those two things aren't equal. But this only works because I derived eek. If I get rid of this piece here, and then try to refresh, then we get an error, no instance for eek t. Um, so this is really, really handy. Um, but it turned out that we wanted more from this feature. So uh, one thing we might want to do is, let's say we have a new type. So if we have a new type, so I'm going to say age is just like int, but it's it's age. So we're going to say that that age is a wrapper around uh, uh, age is a new type wrapper around int. So that means that at runtime, age and int have the exact same representation. They're represented by the same bits, but maybe there are some type type level differences. So maybe we want age always to be non-negative, for example, whereas int can be negative. Uh, we could use word or something for that if we wanted to, but let's just let's just go with it. Um, so at this point, we we can use deriving. I can derive show and eek here as well. And so we can play around with this. I can say, what is show of muck age of five? And I can evaluate that. And we get muck, the string muck age five. So that's good. I can ask, what is or does muck age of five equal muck age of six? No, it doesn't. And that's because I've derived show and eq. So that's that uses the same mechanism that we have for t. But but actually, I want more than just show and eq here. I, I also want num. Right? Because if, if int is a number, then I should be able to do all of these nice numbery things with age. I want to be able to, to see what's mc age of 5 plus mc age of 2. Um, well, and then we get some strange error over here because actually my, my file isn't compiling. So let's just comment out the bad bit. And if I try to evaluate, no instance for num age. But, but this kind of makes sense because if I know that int is a num, I should be able to know that age is a num. I want to just take all of the int definitions for all of the num methods and then just sort of copy them over to age. Um, well, it turns out that, of course, GHC supports this and it has for quite some time. If we actually look at the error here, um, so if we look at the error here, then cannot cannot make a derived instance for num age. Num is not a stock derivable class. So there's this funny word stock here that's coming up, uh, and I'll explain that more in a minute. Um, but it's saying it's not one of these built-in ones, right? So I described show and eek. There's a, there's a couple of others. Ord we can we can automatically generate. Read we can automatically generate. Um, there's just a, a very few, but there's not really very many of them. 
Num is not one of them. There's no automatic way we can analyze the definition of a type and from that definition know exactly the right num instance. Um, but the error message helpfully suggests, what if we do generalized new type deriving? So let's add this as a language extension. And so now having done that, um, get rid of that bogusness. Um, so now we get no error here anymore. Um, and down here, can I refresh this? Oh, I can, and it all works. Um, and so what generalized new type deriving says is that if we're deriving um, uh, uh, an instance for a class that's not one of these sort of built-in classes, and we're doing this for a new type, then just copy all of the definitions over from the representation type. There's a little bit more going on than just that, but that's a really, really good approximation for what's happening. And this is another kind of deriving called new type deriving. Um, so there's one more way that we can do. There's actually two more ways, but the, the next way is uh, that, that GHC introduced. This is quite a bit more recently um, in my time of dealing with GHC, maybe five years ago or so. Um, if we have a class, we'll call it class CA, where the instance is really quite boring here, um, and, and we'll see a better example of this in just a moment. Um, but if I have a class CA, instead of writing for my data type T here, instead of writing instance CT, which of course works just fine, that's very verbose, isn't it? That's a lot of words there. I don't want to have to write that. I just want to say in my deriving clause, deriving C. Um, and really, I should be able to write the instance quite easily because there's no methods to fill in anyway. Um, and if we look here, we see that we get an error, and it says it is not a stock derivable class. In this case, we are told to try enabling derive any class. Okay, so let's turn on derive any class. And then now we see uh, this works just fine. It can derive C, and all it's doing is it just creates this instance CT with no body. Um, and that's all derive any class does, is it creates instances with no body. Um, but now you may have noticed that a warning has appeared. And that's because both derive any class and generalized new type deriving are enabled. And maybe it's a little ambiguous which one we want to use for now. Do we want the empty instance or do we want the instance that copies all of the implementations over from int? Um, and so it defaults to the deriving any class strategy, which I think is a bit weird here. I really think it should use generalized new type deriving, but at least it's telling us what it's doing and it's giving us a warning so that we have an idea of what's going on. And then actually we end up with a separate warning so we get no implementation for all of these methods inside of num. So this is kind of weird what's going on here, but at least it's telling us what it's doing. And then it helpfully suggests use deriving strategies. Um, so let's see what that's about. Let's turn on deriving strategies. And now by itself, that doesn't make the, the warning go away. Um, and it still says use deriving strategies to pick a different strategy. So maybe that this is another area for improvement because we've already turned that on, but we need a little bit more guidance here. The idea of deriving strategies is it allows us to specify to GHC what, well, strategy we wish to use to derive an instance. So now we can start breaking up our instances into different, or our, our sort of deriving clauses into these different strategies. So the one that shipped with Haskell 98, that's called stock. Um, because these are called stock instances. These are the same old instances that we would get um, uh, from, from, from anyone else. Um, uh, a fun little history there. There was a long debate about what that keyword should be. Is stock the right name? And I was advocating for the nicely British bespoke meaning that we're generating just the right instance for the thing. Bespoke is sort of a, a fancy British word meaning um, uh, uh, customized. Um, uh, but then right before that got accepted, um, uh, my, my good friend Joachim Breitner came in and said, what about stock? It's just like a regular instance, like all of those other instances. And stock won the day. I was very excited for bespoke to become a keyword in a programming language, but, but oh well. Um, so we have stock here. Um, and now we get an error for C because I can't, I don't know what a stock derivable C would be. So instead I have to remove C from this line and then write separately deriving any class C. I can leave out the parens if there's only one. 
And so this means the same thing that my old deriving clause meant, but now it's a lot more explicit. I know that that these up here are derived using the stock strategy, and this one is derived using the any class strategy. So now down here, I can be more explicit. So I can say I want stock show and eek, but I want new type for num. And then now all is well. I've specified exactly how I want my, my instance to be to be written. So it turns out that that the default of, of using stock for show, that may or may not be what we want. So down here we see, and I'll just refresh to show that nothing has changed. So McAge of five is still McAge of five. If I move show here to go down here, instead of being the stock show instance, I want the new type show instance. So it means copy over all of the details from int, but it doesn't add McAge. So now if I refresh, aha, we lose the McAge in the, in the shown output. And that's because I've said that I want my show instance to be a new type instance. Um, and we can mix all of these together. I could have deriving um, uh, uh, any class as well down here. Um, so I did say earlier that, that I'd give a better example for any class. So a good example is if we import the ASON library here. Um, and so if I import data.ason, the ASON library gives us uh, classes from JSON and to JSON. Um, I think I can easily do something like this. Do I get lucky and get something interesting? Yes, I do. Um, so the from JSON class has a few methods. It has parse JSON and parse JSON list. Um, but there's a default implementation of parse JSON that uses generic. Okay, so what does this mean? This means that if I have an instance from JSON, so let's do this for T here. So I can, let me write it out explicitly first. I can have an instance from JSON T to automatically generate a parser that will parse JSON into a T. Um, and so I'm, I have an error here, no instance for generic. And that's, so generic is another feature in GHC that produces an instance of the class generic. Um, and that's what's used uh, under the hood to derive this, this parser. So for this to work, I need to use, I need to derive generic. And this is one of these stock classes because we can do the automatic thing. Um, we're gonna get an error because I need to, oh, it's not in scope. Well, that's silly of me. I can import that and fix that problem, ghc.generics. Um, and oh, and then that's good enough, I guess. I'm surprised at that. Um, and then ambiguous occurrence C. Oh, is there something from generic C? I don't want that. Let's get rid of that hiding C. Um, okay, so now can't make a derived instance. We need derived generic. So let's turn on that extension. Oops. Okay, um, and now, now this instance type checks. And, and now we're going to use this default parse JSON implementation, which is quite a good implementation. This is a reasonable thing to do. So I said any class can be used here. So indeed, I can change this. Instead of a standalone instance, I can just derive from JSON using the any class strategy. And this is a much more useful thing than my C example. Sure enough, if I get rid of generic here, then I'm going to get the error here saying no instance for generic. We really still need that generic instance for this to work because the, the default implementation of parse JSON depends on generic. Okay, so this is, so we've seen the stock deriving strategy, the new type deriving strategy, and the any class deriving strategy. Well, there's one more, which is deriving via, which is actually a direct generalization of deriving new type. So I said that new type copies all of the implementations of the methods from int over to work on age. Well, it turns out that for any type whose representation is the same as age, I can actually do this sort of copying. So one example, this is a bit of a strange example, but maybe I want to derive ord via down int. Um, so down, let's see, where does down go? Oh, I have to enable deriving via. Let's just do that. And then now I'm sure I have to import something uh, HLS, can you help me here? What do I have to? Oh, no code actions available. Um, down import. Oh, where does down come from? 
maybe data.org. Aha, yes, that's correct. I'm surprised it couldn't figure that out for me. Um, so what this is saying is I want my ORD instance for age to be the reverse of the one for int. I want to take the instance for down int and copy essentially all of its methods uh, over to work for the ORD instance for age. So, and we can witness this if I check for is muk age five, is that less than muk age six? Um, no, it's not because of down here. The down means reverse the, the, the order. Um, and, and actually, instead of doing five, instead of calling muk age explicitly, we have a num instance for age now. So I could just check five less than six, but I need a type annotation to know that we're still doing age, and we'll get the same result. Okay, so um, so now I, we've seen via. There's a little bit more to via than this. Um, I actually made another video all about deriving via, so I'm going to refer you to that other video. There's going to be a link in the description with more about via. Um, but it is this nice generalization of new type. And so because it's a generalization of new type, we don't need to use new type at all. And instead, we could just say, um, deriving ORD via down int, and then deriving show num via int. Um, and that will work the same as deriving new type. The only, what, what deriving new type is, it's deriving via like this, this last thing. Uh, like, not this last thing, this, the representation type of the new type. So we can get rid of the new type strategy. It's sort of been superseded, although it's still nice to use new type because you don't have to repeat this, this representation type. Um, but then there's also any class. So any class comes from this, this idea that you can have these default methods inside of a class that use other, other, um, other classes. Now that we have deriving via, um, I think it's better generally to have a, to use deriving via to do this. So that way, maybe there's many different ways we might want to default parse JSON, but the old way, we had to sort of choose one that was special that be, could, could be derived by any class, and all of the others had to use, had to use other techniques. Now with deriving via, we could sort of put them all on an, on an uh, uh, evenly, and I think that tends to be better. So maybe one day we can pull out this any class, and we probably keep new type because it's, it's, um, it is quite convenient. Um, but, um, you know, I think if we were to do things again today, we probably would not do any class. Um, anyway, I hope this has been interesting. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.